we know that one is justified by faith, apart from works of the law. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. In Jesus' name, dearly beloved. The law, of course, points to you and to your works. You, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. You, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You, that's the subject under review when it comes to the law and its doctrine. You, you and your works. So when St. Paul writes, we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law, you know by definition St. Paul is preaching and teaching justification apart from you and apart from your works. So leave you and your works out of it then. Not you, Jesus. Not your works, his works. Not your wounds, his wounds. Not your cross, your death, your righteousness, your love, your anything. All him. All Jesus. That's the promise. That's the language. That's the meaning of faith. Leave you out of it. It's Jesus. Always Jesus. Only Jesus. Not you. Never you. Just Jesus. We hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. Faith, then, is not a word the Bible uses or aims against Jesus and the works that Jesus does for you, as if that's just not enough. Faith is a word the Bible uses and aims against you and me, against us and our works against us and our promises. Us and everything and anything we think we say, do, are, become, or bring to God. Apart from sin and death. Not you, Jesus. Faith, then, is a gospel word. Not a law word, a gospel word. A Jesus word. A rescue you from you word. Not a trap you with more of you word. For there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short. Are falling short of the glory of God. You, a believer, sin every day all the time like everyone else. You too then, a believer, deserve God's temporal and eternal punishment. You, a believer, are also falling short of the glory of God 24-7 if the glory of God depends on you and who you are and the works that you are doing. You say you fear, love, and trust in God above all things. What does God say? Does he agree? If I ask you to do ten things and you fail miserably, at those ten things, not just today, but every day. Not finding peace, joy, life, or me in any of those ten things. You may think you love me. You may even say you love me. But according to me and those ten commandments, do you? No. For there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's the law. Accused and condemned, everyone. And, and what? This is why you are all Lutherans. And are justified by his grace, God's grace, as a gift, a gift, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. God put his own son, Jesus, on the cross for you. That's what saves you, not you. Jesus. God punished Jesus when he put all of your sins on Jesus. When Jesus suffered and died for you on the cross, that's what saves you, not you. Jesus. God turned his back on his own son, sent Jesus to wrath and punishment 
and hell and condemnation for you. That's what saves you, not you, Jesus. God loves those who do not love him. Chooses those who do not choose him. Is there for those who are not there for him. Not you, Jesus. That's what saves you. That and that only. Because that way and only that way are you and all of your sins forgiven. Are you and all of your works declared righteous now in God's sight. And you and your life holy now. Past, present, and future. So great is the redemption, the power, the gift of Jesus' death for you and for all your works and all your sins on the cross. And are justified, declared right with God, righteous in his judgment by his grace as a gift. A gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So, if the Son sets you free, and the cross promises you he does, you will be free indeed. Not kind of free, not maybe free, sort of free, free one day perhaps. No, free. Really free. Truly free. Free indeed. Forever free. Did Jesus die on the cross for me and for my sins? Then all my sins have been atoned for, answered for, paid for, for me, by his death for me upon the cross. I am free now from all the sin, my sin, that accuses and condemns me before his Father. Does he come to me, the Father's Son, every day with the promise of his cross now, in holy baptism, washing me, cleansing me, preserving me holy and blameless before God, by his death for me upon the cross, then I am free. Not kind of free, really free. Not sort of free, truly free. Does he speak the promise of his cross to me in every absolution and sermon I hear now in his father's house? Does he come to me at his holy supper with his body and blood for me to eat and to drink as he promises? For you for the forgiveness of sins. Then it's settled, forever settled. I'm free. Free not because I say so. That's not freedom. Free because he says so. Because the Father's Son says so. Because Jesus says so. That's freedom. And it's yours and it's mine. For if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Then what becomes of our boasting? I'm better. I'm different. But I'm this. I'm that. I... No. It is excluded. All of that. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, that's not how the law works. But by the law of faith. Because how does faith work? How does faith talk? Not by looking at itself. Not by looking at us and who we are or what we do. But by looking always and only at Jesus. Who he is. And what he does for us. For you. Only Jesus. Always Jesus. For we hold that one is justified. Right with God. Declared righteous in his sight. By faith apart from works of the law. Leave you out of it then. It's all Jesus. Only Jesus. Yes. Jesus is our faith. In Jesus name. Amen.